Hello, fellow ink drinkers, and welcome back to the Blind Girls Book Talk podcast. My name is Aria. And I'm Belle. And we are two legally blind sisters who love reading and love books. And so what we've done is we've created this show in order to talk about that. We talk about a wide variety of bookish content, and that can range from bad retellings of stories, book-to-movie adaptation comparisons, buddy reads, recent reads, bookish challenges. Really, the list does go on and on. And today, well, today's kind of a big day because... We are going to be launching another podcast. The first episode actually comes out tomorrow, like from the day that this is posted. The new podcast is called It's a Blind Life, and it's where we're going to talk about just how we live our lives being blind, essentially. We thought it would be fitting to launch this because October is... I believe Blind Awareness Month. Hold on. I know we picked this I, day we picked for, it a for a specific reason. And I'm confused because we threw around White Cane Day. We threw around Vision Disability Awareness Month. Like we threw around a bunch of ideas and I can't tell what's what. Yeah, I can't remember. I know we picked this for a specific reason. So while Belle looks that up, essentially we're announcing it here. Of course, it's going to be... Belle and I hosting it. Belle's friend Beth is also going to be coming on as well. She's going to kind of, I think, kind of give some of just a normal person's perspective. Yeah. Or ask the questions that we normal don't people want to know. <laughs> yeah, because especially like in college, for me, I got a lot of questions that I never thought somebody would ask. And so like, I'm just like, I don't know. I just do this. Like, isn't this like I just do this? Yeah. For us, it's because because we were born with our condition. We do not know any different. Right. And our parents did a great job of adapting their world to us. Yeah. I guess is the best way to put it. So we legit don't know any different. So yeah. Anyway, yes. October is Blindness Awareness Month. Yes brings a heightened focus on the blind and visually impaired community and the relativities of living without sight. Yes. So we figured this was a perfect time to announce this and to start this podcast and that sort of thing. So the other podcast will be hosted in pretty much all of the same places that this one is. And episodes of that podcast will also be going up on YouTube as well. It will be on the same channel that our current videos are posted to the Blind Girls uh, books. I'm going to be changing the name. So if all goes well, the YouTube channel will now be called Blind Girls Podcasts. And we will have both the Blind Girls Book Talk and It's a Blind Life on that channel so i would also like to make aware i know earlier this year we mentioned about changes coming this was not the change that we thought was coming yeah this is not <laughs> something we planned because honestly bell still has her true crime podcast that she wants to do yeah that was what was originally planned to come out and then insanity ensued yeah and then insanity year. ensued and so, like that got pushed back and then Arya brought this up and so now we're here <laughs> yes exactly so all of that out of the way the other thing that we're going to actually be talking about today is blind representation in books Again, fitting given everything that's going on. We were going to originally just talk about our vision, but over on the other podcast, our introductory episode is going to be all about our vision and us. So if you want more on that, go to that episode. I'm going to tell you now, most likely you're going to get a lot of my snarky comments. Yes. This again, this so if is you, if you enjoy my snark, go right ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> this, this other podcast is definitely going to be more kind of in a way, kind of like a journal of like how I think we deal with stuff. Journal therapeutic. 
Yeah, it's definitely going to be a different vibe from here, and it will get real sometimes. So oh, yeah. just a warning for that. But all in all, though, still going to be kind of similar to what we do over here, just a Except different it's going topic. to be bi-weekly. Oh, yeah. Well, and we'll announce all of that over there. We will explain everything over on that episode. <laughs> So anyway, so blind representation in books, like I said, name of the topic today. So I will admit it is very rare for me to come across a book where a character is visually impaired. I can only name one book I read where the character was visually impaired and I hated life. (laughs) <laughs> yeah there's only one from recent memory that comes to mind well actually two but they were written by the same author i feel like especially for us one of our things is because we live it we don't really want to read about it and uh, no offense to some authors because i'm sure there are some authors who write visual disability and like have good representation of that however how would i want to say this because being visually impaired slash blind is considered a disability, there are many a times that when a sighted person is writing it, it falls under the stereotype and stigma of blind people. Yeah, a lot of times it's not... Is that the words I want? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. It's not good representation. Yeah, it's not good representation. It's just kind of your standard thing. Actually, I lied. There are three books that I'm thinking of (laughs) in recent memory where characters are visually impaired. I only know one off the top of my head. But I feel like that's with anything because I think I talked about this in another something where I mentioned I wrote a book about social anxiety Yes. And I, Aria can attest, I have extreme social anxiety. Like, it's really bad. It's getting better. I'm working through it in therapy. It's fine. But, like, even that, a lot of people don't give proper representation. Or when they try to do it, they don't do it well to, like, what it actually is and how it actually can, like, it can severely affect your life. So, like, it's kind of the same with blind and visual issues and and i'm not saying that you know it's completely people's prop like it's all the author's fault for writing it that way and blah 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 when it's really not considering the stigma that society has placed yeah so i'm not a hundred percent faulting the authors i'm a hundred percent a hundred percent faulting society that's a fair point a fair point (laughs) i will argue this man i know you will yeah this this is the hill i'll die on (laughs) yeah and i mean like i get it and that's fair (laughs) for me again like bell said because we live it this is not something that i look for it's not something that i seek out typically and honestly too i want to say that the books that i'm thinking of They didn't really mention the character, like one of the characters being visually impaired. Like, I don't think that that was something that was like clearly stated. I know like the one that I'm thinking of that I did love the story, which I think I've talked about it before, is the romancing the Duke. I forget who it's by. But essentially in that story, the guy had lost his vision And the girl kind of ended up a family friend or a relative of hers ended up buying like his house, essentially, or the place he was living. And so she kind of came in and was like, this is my place now. And he's like, no, it's not. And she's like, well, you can stay here. And like, it's, it's a romance between them. And it's, it's really cute. I really like it. I have to admit from the way, Aria has told me about this book because she says I'd like it. The representation of the blind duke Mm -hmm. is very reminiscent of the struggles that blind and visually impaired people have. Yes. And Um, like it was done well. Like, yeah, because because you mentioned about how like when she was moving stuff around, it got him really angry. mm -hmm. And like then she realized, you know, oh, by moving stuff around it then he doesn't know he doesn't know where things are he can't figure that out and that's very true can i tell the joke dad said 
Okay. <laughs> to preface this. This is a joke. This it, First of all, this is entirely a joke. 120% a joke. We laugh at it. We you laugh, can laugh at, at it. it. You are allowed to laugh at it. It is funny. So the thing about us is that we have always been, especially about our disability, you can cry about it or you can laugh about it. And it's much better to laugh. It, it, it's much better to laugh. And if you have to cry, you have to scream, you have to yell, you have frustrations, you do it behind closed doors. Well, at least that's what I was taught. Okay. To kind of walk that back. <laughs> It's more you are allowed like your feelings of frustration in that moment and anger and sadness are valid and you can take the time that you need to do that. But it does not mean that you have to stop living your life when you have those moments. Yeah. And they were very much like I know, especially for me, I'm pretty sure it was the same thing for Aria. I was not allowed to go to kindergarten until I could laugh at myself. Oh no, that well, but I was, but, but her situation was yeah, different my situation because was she found different. out like two weeks before kindergarten that she was blind. But for me, it was I was not allowed to go to kindergarten until I could laugh at myself because kids are mean, and yeah. I was already held back because I still am. I was extremely small for my age. Yes, like mentally, I could have gone to kindergarten, but physically, my body couldn't handle the eight-hour school day. So, like, I had to be held back. And even then, like, I had to be, like, it was very much, you can't do this. We will hold you back another year. Like, we will fight this. Like, we will do something. But no. Yeah. But anyway, so, essentially. Also, another preface. Our father is where I get my sense of humor. Yes. Our <laughs> father, he's a very interesting man. He's a lovely man. We love him. And... I think when we found out for me, because like Belle said, my story is a lot different and I will go into my story on the other episode. So if you want more context, yeah, it, each of our stories are different. But we found out that I was blind like two weeks before kindergarten started. And so when I went to school, because they had to change the school I was going to, when I finally went to my school, my parents had to meet with kind of like a social worker kind of deal yeah it, it was pretty much like a social worker to see because at that point it was found out that aria is disabled so it was kind of a are checking you in. a check-in are you fit to parent, this, parent child? this child like can you handle this so they had to meet with this social worker lady and i i think you know she just had the standard questions of what do you do about this how would you handle this la 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 <laughs> and one of the questions that sh this lady asked was how do you punish your child and my dad said oh it's easy we just move the furniture around on her you, no, we moved the furniture over by two inches. Yeah, we, well, yeah, we mo essentially, we moved the furniture. And so the lady was shocked. And of she course, just stared at him. She just stared at him. My mom is hitting my dad, like, stop it. My dad is, like, <laughs> cackling internally, I think. Because oh, yeah, he's he, just like, this was the best joke I've th ever this made. This was the best joke I've ever made. Because the joke is that how did Helen Keller's parents punish her? And the joke is that they moved the furniture over by two inches, so she'd constantly run into it. Yeah. And, like, he had to then try to explain it, and our mom's like, oh my gosh, he's going to stop. get this child taken away from us. Yeah, he's, she's going to get our child taken away. But no, they didn't, obviously, because, like I said, my parents are good parents at the end of the day. They did their best, yeah. and that's really all you can ask out yeah. of parents. And so, anyway... As we were saying before, this was a very long tangent. This was a very long tangent. But yes, that book did that concept very well. And like the girl was just like, oh, OK, I can like change the way that I am behaving in order to accommodate this. And it wasn't made to be like this really big deal. Yeah, that I like the book I read and the only one I can think of that has blind person stuff. It was called Blindsided. Mm -hmm. not the film <laughs> not not the not the film the, not the or, football. not not the football people 
it was called Blindsided. And it was actually a really cool cover because the title was in actual, you know, words in English. But then they had Braille kind of behind it. And like, it, it was cool. I enjoyed it because I know Braille. Some Braille, let me preface this because I got frustrated with the Braille code because they keep changing it. Mm-hmm. So I got mad. So I stopped. But I know basic Braille. I can fudge my way through. Right. So, like, that was interesting. And the book went through a girl. She had, I forget exactly the name. You will you know it because the guy who beat you for the scholarship had it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I forget the actual I name, I forget though. the actual name. Point being, she was going to completely lose her vision. Yes. And so, like, it was, like, a whole thing. And, like, she was completely angry at the world. And, like, it was, like, this whole thing. And, okay, again, I can't speak for sighted people. But one thing that I personally hate is how for sighted people, they lose their vision in a book or movie or something. It is the worst thing in the world. So, okay, I get it's a change, but let me go on. And then we'll go to (laughs) Go on. And it kind of got me frustrated because I'm just like, you can still do a lot. And I hope we've shown you that, that you can do a lot even with the disability. But anyway, they send her to a school that is for the blind and to, you know, help them do vision training or, you know, life skills to be able to survive on your own. Mm -hmm. And like, it was like this private boarding school and she was like so mad at her parents for sending her there. And like, it was like this huge thing. And, like, there are so many instances where I'm just, like, okay, one scenario was handled correctly, I think, out of the entire book. But, like, it was semi-handled correctly, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The way the character kind of started it was right. And then how, like, her actual thoughts and everything, it went downhill very quickly. Yeah. And so, like, it got me frustrated. I don't know what why they think we go around feeling people's faces we do not yeah we'll talk more about that's gonna be another but that was in the book so like that got me mad there were things that like we don't do this like why are you saying we do this we don't do that yeah (laughs) anger yeah so okay here's what i will say because i read a book where the main character was another she was gradually losing her vision and what got me a little bit frustrated is that the character pretty much through the couple books that i read was very much like poor me poor me poor me poor me and i get it it is one of those things where you are losing something that most people consider very valuable So I get you need your time to grieve. I get you need your time to process. I get you need your time to realize that, yes, it's not good. It's not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. But it doesn't mean your life stops. It doesn't mean that you're dying. It's something that can be managed if you learn how to do things the right way. And so for me, that's where... I think I just kind of got annoyed because it was just a continual poor me pity party kind of thing and everything is awful. And I was just kind of like, I mean, yeah, it's not good, but like, honestly, like start learning, like find a way to learn how to do stuff. There are resources out there. Like there are ways to get help there are (laughs) ways to get help there are ways you can learn to still do the things that you like that you want to do granted there will be some things you can't do there will be some things you can't do but for the most part it's not as much of a woe is me yeah everything is awful yeah i can't do anything ever again like my life is over that everybody seems to think think it is yes it's not good and yes you know there is going to be huge adjustments but you can still do the things that you want to do yes like heck i will even admit and i'm sure ari will attest we were born with it and there are days we get frustrated and we break down yes but those are those are few and far between like I, i think between both of us we only have like two a year 
If that. If that. I know for me, it's definitely one a year. Mine, I don't know. Mine's every couple years, I think. Yeah, I feel like you have a better grasp on it. Because I just know I come to you. Like, I think my last major meltdown was whenever I was getting ready to go to college. That was bad. Yeah. Because everything that I liked for, like, my dorm room and, like, that felt good sensory wise to me none of it was matching anything like i lost it yeah and i was just like forget it <laughs> it ain't worth it like get what you want to get yeah you know? but like my whole thing was i didn't necessarily want my room to look to a sighted person yeah whereas me i don't care like i you didn't care that. <laughs> i have fully embraced that <laughs> i like what i like it looks like pure chaos to you, probably, but to me, I love it. Yeah. And granted, that there is differences between us in that regard. Like, things that feel better for my eyes and are coming from my eyes are not for Aria's and vice versa. Yeah. Very much so. But anyway, so yeah. So, like I said, I know this is going to be, like, rambling and all over the place, but this is just kind of a... We've only read some books that have the blind representation. It's very rare to find one that does it and does it well. And even if somebody is like, oh, this one has a really good representation, a lot of times I'm hesitant to read them. Yeah. Because it's just like... It's different versus when you live it. Right. Because you have a better grasp on things. And I can speak for both of us. We've been around other blind people. We kind of have a general... Again, we can't speak for all blind people. But we have a general consensus of how people go through things. Right. Again, I will stipulate it's not for everybody. And not everybody's the same. Right. Yeah. I mean, all in all, though, like I said, I feel like compared to a lot of other blind people that we know compared to a lot of other people with disabilities in that general we know, in general i feel like we have a much better just overall mindset yes because, that i will say and it's because of the way our parents raised us yes so anyway yeah i don't know what else to say about this to be honest check out the other podcast we're definitely going to be kind of going more into detail about just you know, our general history and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that, like I said, it's going to be called It's a Blind Life. Just kind of look for that. You will find it. And we'll go through everything over on that episode. So with that being said, we want to thank you as you came along with us today as we talked about blind representation and about our new show. Of course, if you liked this episode, if you like what you've been listening to, please consider following the podcast and sharing the episode with your friends. It really would help us to grow the show, and we would appreciate the support those actions would give. Now, what are we going to be talking about next time? Next week is an author talk on Mary Shelley. Oh, uh, yes, and that is going to be, I think, a Beth and me episode oh, I believe lovely. because I believe next week is when you are in midterms right next week is my last week of classes before midterms yes so, so most likely gonna it's be, going to be Beth like I'm not going to be here yeah I'm you're gonna going to be MIA be, for a minute <laughs> yeah she's going to be MIA for a little bit so that being said we will see you guys next time then bye, bye.